I have this word that was given to me and I used to look at this word and I hear preachers with this word but I always find something interesting beyond what they see and the word was given to me the other side of the coin the other side of the coin what am I referring to? The number one criminal in the Bible that is normally hit down without a second glance. The name is Judas. Is there a Judas among us? Who is Judas? Many don't like to touch this subject because it might mash a few toes and mash a few corn but however, remember, Jesus was the transcender to teaching us everything. And Judas was among Jesus. He was one of the twelve. And like how Judas was then, there is still Judas now. He was chosen by the Lord Jesus Christ himself. To be a part of the 12, to be a part of the apostles that was supposed to go into the world spreading the gospel. Many preachers would like to shine a light on the dark side and the bad side of Judas and his character. However, do you know a Judas? Are you close to a Judas? Do you rub shoulders with a Judas? Judas himself was a self-justification man who liked to take things quickly. Nothing passed him. How do you know that? He's a man that likes to sit in the back and watch everything what took place. But don't say a word until he's outside among like-minded people. Not much words was mentioned from Judas in the scriptures, but the actions, there was a saying, action speaks louder than words, which is found here. What motivated him? Some say the love of money, that didn't help. Some say it was greed or the fact that he's an opportunist looking for the right opportunity to make quick money to satisfy his temporary needs. We know many people like that. Yet still he was chosen. We take our scripture in Luke 22, verse 1 to 3. Now the feast of, of, of the unleavened bread was drawn nigh, which is called the Passover. And the chief priests and scribes sought how they might kill him, Jesus. For they feared the people. Then Satan entered into Judas' surname Iscariot, being one of the twelve. That is the key verse, verse 3. How did Satan enter into Judas' Iscariot? even though he was one of the 12.
I often like to watch documentaries and movies that interest me. And I would reflect to see those classic movies where you will have a bank job and they will rob the bank. And you wonder how on earth they get to rob the bank and get away scot-free. Why is that? They had an inside man. People that like to go around and smash the, the jewelers and grab and tie up the security. All of a sudden, security is tied up and bound and can't move. Why is that? They have an in side man same so with this scenario Judas was the inside man here the Bible identify him funny enough first name and last name first name and last name how many know the rest of the disciples' first name and last name? That goes to show you the importance of Judas. When the devil comes around and enters into a person, there is a change. Even if they were once saved, their views about God and the Bible change. They may even denounce God. They denounce church. They denounce the word of God. Because their mind has changed. Their objective has now diverted to something else. They might even start complaining. Be careful who complain to you. Starting a ripple or a division, even in the church, all it takes is a little murmur. Conspiring with brethren, even against the leaders of the church. Be careful who complains to you. Working himself behind in the scenes where he looked the same, moved the same, act the same. It's like having a pool of ocean swimming around a multitude of fish, but not every fish are the same. Some are very silent and deadly. In Luke 22, verse 4 and 5, and he went his way and communed with the chief priests and captains how he might betray him unto them. Verse 5, and they were glad. They were glad. The devil thought his plan was working. His device and tricks was working. To divide and conquer, it begins to work. And covenant to give him money. Like I said, anything to get a quick transaction. He's ready for it. Be careful when sitting in the seat of the scornful. <laughs> The chief priests needed this inside man. Because they themselves couldn't even tell who Jesus was. They all looked the same, they moved the same, they talked the same. But something stood out about Judas. He loved money. 
Oh, yes, he loved money. I remember I was told once when I was in school, he was very good at acting and drama. And the teacher said, would you play a scene with yourself or with another man? I said, no way. Then he looked to me and said, you know what? You say no now, but everybody has their price. I didn't know he was talking about, you know, until I saw this played out for myself. When another colleague was spot on TV playing a role with interaction with another man. Then it reflected back to me, everybody has their price. I am sure they approached Judas on multiple occasions. He might deny the fact, no, 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 I wouldn't do that, I wouldn't do that. Just like Peter, oh, no, 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 I wouldn't do that. Until the right price was set and the agreement was there. Too late now to turn back because you shook the hand of your enemy. Same man. Same man. After sitting with Jesus, walking with Jesus, Feasting with Jesus. Learning from Jesus. Being in the presence of Jesus Christ himself. How many of us would kill to be in the atmosphere? Yet, he tried to blend in and act as if nothing is happening. Everything is fine. No agenda hidden. Not standing out. Is not easy to do. Especially when you're with lively people. But when you're silent. And move less. It's easy. For you to slip away when the commotion is taking place and the excitement is around Jesus watch those who like to be in the background you find himself very close to the exit so you don't even know when they disappear you remember they were there or well, all of a sudden they're gone have you seen someone so well they were there but now they're not there Satan entered into his heart how is that possible because vacancy was there space was there room was there it's like turning up to church service and down out of a routine but you're absent-minded from church then why turn up you come to worship God but you sit out of routine because Sunday is Sunday but your heart is not here your mind is not here. Your thoughts, and your body is here. But if you could be elsewhere, that is where you would rather be. Find yourself wandering off, thinking about unnecessary things. Did I leave the stove on? Did I remember to turn off the tap? I wonder if I shut the front door. How does that feed your soul? absent-minded Jesus knew that Judas 
was a very vital and important key to completing his own task. And one thing I know about this, even when he was put in that position, he said, not my will, but thine will be done. There is always a way made, even when you feel cornered and trapped. God always make a way. Even when you think there is no way, it is over, it is finished, God always make a way. He specializes in this. Jesus knew that he needed Judas. That's why he never called him out around the table. Hmm. Luke 22, verse 4 to 5. And when he rose up from prayer and was come to his disciple, he found them sleeping for sorrow. And he said unto them, Why sleep ye? Rise and pray, lest ye enter into temptation. He was trying to prepare their hearts, prepare their mind. When you come into the house of God, you have energy all the way until you reach the front door. All of a sudden, the biggest yawn lick you. You have life singing all the way to church. And as soon as you sit down, it's like weight is on your head. Sometimes your, your voice gone, energy gone. The plan of the enemy. The plan of the enemy. Verse 4 to 7, and while he yet spake, behold a multitude, and he that was called Judas, one of the twelve, went before them and drew near unto Jesus to, to, to kiss him. Hmm. Even though the multitude had arrived surrounding Jesus and the disciples, they still didn't know which one it was. So they were relying on Judas. So can you imagine the crowd now and Judas being pushed in the front to identify Jesus. So when the disciples see Judas coming, they say, oh, he's returning. But guess what? He's returning with the wrong crowd because he's being pushed towards the master. What is hidden in the dark? must be revealed in. So all those background movements and transaction, the same people which he thought he can just take the money and run, put him at the front. Because now the agenda has turned up, the heat has turned up, which pitchfork, the torch, the rope, the knife, the sword. We must grab this man tonight. Which one? I don't know. He know. 
Can you imagine being shoved in the back? Don't want to go and take three step backward, then push him forward. And you have to show us which one because you, you don't take the money already. The deal is already made. We done feel a part. You do your part. So being shoved in the back to come to the front to find out which one was Jesus. And the disciples see their brother coming towards them. There was no animosity at first. Because they recognized Judas. He's one of us. He must have went off and got more recruits to become more disciples. What an evangelist he is. With, with Christ, he already knew what was taking place in the midst of tribulation and trouble. I know God will make a way. He will turn situation around. Jesus never let his enemy know what he was thinking. Never let his enemy know that I know that you are my enemy. Why is that? Because if your enemy thinks nothing is going on and he is free, he will move freely and make enough mistakes. Enough mistakes because nobody knows what I am doing. Until it's time to play his part. Because remember, Judas is the man being pushed at the front, but he loves to be at the back. This is out of character for him, very uncomfortable. So when he was given the choice to choose, he made that choice. Now he has to play his part. Judas had a purpose. Can you imagine being born of this world to be the betrayer of Jesus Christ. What a wonderful title on your tombstone. Nobody wants to be called a betrayer. You kiss the master with this army. And before you know it, one disciple take out a sword and what touch my teacher, you're better than who? You see, when people preach that the 12 disciples were gentle people, they weren't. Jesus walked with his own little gang. 12 bad men. One of them badder than bad, take out knife. You're with Christ, you know, and take out sword. Where you get that from? Where he get that from? And you with the Savior. Why? The reason why he acted that way is because he loved Christ. You mean to tell me, so you come with, with all of this? To take him where? To do what? I'd rather... Yeah. Pass ready. And as soon as he lashed him, boom, he has dropped off. So he was bad, but very rubbish with a knife. And catch him with the ears. Yet still Christ took the ear, replaced it back, healed the servant, and warned him and said, listen to me. Even though I know your heart is at the right place, but if you keep walking that way, you're going to dead the same way. You live by the sword, you die by the sword. Not everything can be handled with a sword. For we wrestle not against flesh and...
the weapons of this warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of the stronghold. Jesus knew this, the disciples individually. There was more than one traitor, you know. There were two. But we kill one more than the other. Why? One was able to turn his life around. One was warned. Peter, before the night end, you are going to sell me out. Not once, not twice, three times before six o'clock. Me! Me! Better say this one here. Me, God! That is us. We say the same thing. God, I would never, never tell God never until you live that experience. And walk in somebody else's shoes. Never tell God, never. Me would never. No, sir. Because until you have that experience, then he can testify. Born to be a betrayer. Born to help put the master on a tree. What a burden. What a burden to bear. After the realization has took place in Judas' mind, he didn't want the money again. Take the money. I, I don't want it. Job already done, boss. But I don't want the money. I don't want it. Too late, the money. Listen, get away. We already got the man we want. But I changed my mind. Too late. I don't want to do this no more. I don't feel right. This doesn't feel right. What are you going to do with him? It's not your problem, boss. You get paid already. Go on about your business. Because this man, by hook or crook, must die. It got to the point where Jesus was bound and escorted away from the same disciples he was around. What is your purpose today? Judas had his purpose. As bad as it sounds, but he was vital for Jesus to meet the cross. In the word of God it says when they were around the table and Jesus put his hand in the bowl, Judas put his hand in the bowl same time. Jesus looked upon him and said to him go on, quick. Quick. Quickly. So even if Judas changed his heart temporarily, the master had already spoken and commanded. You see the idea you have in your head? Continue it. Quickly. So he had to fulfill the task he was born to do. Can you imagine if Judas decided that morning that, you know what, I'm not going to go ahead with it. No, 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 I changed my mind. I've, I've been with the man for three and a half years, and, and, and I cannot, I just cannot see myself betraying my teacher. Can't betray my master. Then what would have happened to us? What would have happened to the lost? 
What would have happened to the Gentiles? What would have happened to Pentecost? Where do we fit in? Remember, in every situation, God always make a way. Had Judas not played his part, we would have found somebody else. I'm telling you. Had Judas backed out, he would have found somebody else. But because he was commanded by Christ, do it quickly. We missed a part in it. When Jesus speaks, it has to take place. Do it quickly. So he acted fast and did his part very quickly. What is our purpose today? Let us ask the Lord to reveal the purpose and plans he has for us. No longer should we hide in the background from our destiny. No longer will we hide in the background doing the routine. Sunday come, Sunday down, Sunday come. That's not what we are here for. Where is your headspace at when you come, especially when you come into the house of the Lord? Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with mm. Where is your heart? Your body will always follow wherever your heart is. So if you're Heart is outside. It won't take long for your whole body to be outside. Psalms 51, verse 10. Create in me a clean heart, O oh God, and renew a right heart. What is that telling me? There is a right spirit, also there is a wrong spirit. Sometimes we read these words and we overlook them, you know. Why would it say, renew a right spirit? Because if you don't have the right spirit in you, believe you me, the wrong one will enter. Satan is here on a mission. And remember, he hates and despises God with everything in his being. So why are we comfortable with him? Because he would not be passionately comfortable with you. He can destroy you given the opportunity. If it had not been for the fence and the hedge of God around us, many of us would have wiped off long time. Long time. He does not care about us one bit. Why? We are striving to go to the place he once was. Sinners can be redeemed and God can fill them with the Holy Spirit and we can be caught up to meet him on that great day. But he has no chance. He was once there living the life. The word of God said he hit the earth like lightning. Pow. No more to return to his former glorious state. So now, he cannot fight God physically. No way. But his creation, 
that God loves so much, if he can put a mark on you or a smudge on you, he's happy with that. You know why? You know why? Because when the Lord returns, he's looking for a church without... If he can just leave a little mudge on you, he's satisfied. Satan never knew the plans and the purpose of Judas. He thought it was, this was the winning, I had the winning plan. This must work in order to destroy Jesus. Come on. And I find one of the inside man them willing to work with me. This is a win-win. Not only will I destroy Jesus, but I will destroy his word. Field again. Leave no room in your heart for Satan to enter, to distract or influence you. The word of God said, thy word have I hid in my heart that I may not sin against thee. It teaches us what to do. It teaches us the steps and it's not hard. What is hard is our natural flesh fighting against the spiritual man. That's the battle. Because the flesh doesn't want nothing to do with anything good. Satisfy me, me, feed me, look after me, pay me, pay me attention. And if I feel pain, rub my, yes, pay me. Me, 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 me. That's it. That's why we must put our body under sub. Put your body under sub. I must tell you. First Peter. Chapter 5, verse 8. Be sober. Be vigilant. Because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour. He's not a lion. He make enough noise like a lion, but he's not a lion. As a lion, but he's not a lion. Seeking who he may devour. Now, all those who know the thing about animal kingdom. Lions do not devour nothing. Them eat, eat, and them go and left that. But you see a snake? A snake devour everything. Starting from the head. Why the head? Because that's your dome, that's your mental thinking, that's the power. Without the brain, nothing else works. So if Satan can enter your mind and capture your mind, there's no way you're fighting him. That's why the helmet of salvation is so important. Devour. We all have a master plan written out for our lives by God himself. He is the potter and we are the clay. I've never heard the clay tell the potter, I want to be a boat. I want to be a pot. It is whatever that is in the potter's mind, he then creates. And then when he's put us in shape and form us, he puts us 
in a kiln which they called fire and he cook and cook and cook and cook and cook and after you've been through that fire he then withdraw you out and allow you to cool down and then he decorates you and say this is my masterpiece we cannot go through life without entering the fire we cannot succeed unless we go through the fire the fire is temporal but saints there is a fire that is eternal that is coming when the master withdraw you from the fire remember you become from rubbish to something of great value ask the Lord for your purpose reveal to you your purpose and walk in your purpose because there is a day coming when the question will ask what did you do with your time what did you do with your time remember as bad as Judas was and how they marred his name his role was so important even though he didn't see it he didn't know it but his role was so important and so is the role for example of mom and dad pillars foundation for the church to be held up and to stand on now this foundation is firm because they build their foundation on the foundation which is Christ remember where you are remember where you sit and remember the time and place you are in because many will rather swap places with you as I said before that cannot be or cannot activate them some can't even move their hands but to be in the house of the Lord one more time is is a blessing it is a privilege an honor know your purpose walk in your purpose and this is my few words the other side of the coin amen and now may the saving grace of our lord and savior jesus christ the love of god our father full fellowship of the holy spirit the comforter rest remain and abide with us all now and forever